Hi, this is Brian with King Grizzly, and in this important video, I want to talk about some of the challenges of wrapping and alignment using Flexbox in Elementor. These challenges are not unique to Elementor. These challenges exist in Flexbox in general, but you've likely encountered, especially if you moved from the old sections and columns approach in Elementor, where you could set percentage widths on columns and they would wrap intuitively. Well, now in Flexbox, that doesn't happen like you might think. So you can see here these 33% wide columns. The third one is, is wrapping to the next row. And in this vertical alignment example, you can see the second row here, the three containers don't quite line up with the ones above in the way that we would hope vertically. You can see the margins are off. So I want to talk about why this happens. And then in forthcoming videos, I'm going to talk about uh, some solutions, but it's good to get an understanding of what's uh, happening uh, before we work on solutions. So I'm going to try to explain the challenges of wrapping a vertical alignment. Uh, succinctly. Some of this you'll probably have seen before, um, but I think some of these thoughts will be, be new for people. Um, so the first thing is one that which I have seen fairly frequently on YouTube, for example. So you have three 33% wide child containers, but they wrap, the third one wraps. Well, why is this? And the, the simple explanation, so if I click on a container, you'll see I set it to 33% wide. So 33 times three is 99%, but with Flexbox, we have a parent container, like a wrapper, and you'll see it has a gap value, the space that I want in between the children. If I set that to zero, they're all gonna go to the same line and fit. So what's happening is when I add a gap in, we have 33% times three is 99%, but then we also have the gap, 60 pixels here, and then another 60 pixels here, which means we have 99% plus 120 pixels. So actually, Flexbox doesn't, there's just not enough room to fit all these because it adds in the gap values. That's why if you zero out the gap, they all fit on one line. You may, you may have a design where this works fine, and if that's the case, then the wrapping will generally work as you expect. One gotcha to look out for is when you first put a container on a page, it's not set to wrap. So it's set to actually no wrap. So if I turn that off, you'll see, oh, now they fit. I turned off wrapping, but if I duplicate this container, you'll see that, oops, it'll just keep fitting them on the same line because it's set to just not wrap. Um, so uh, that can be useful under certain conditions, but if you're looking to do precise design and alignment, especially on something like a 12 column grid coming over from a design program, you're gonna find that that's challenging for sure and very hard to line up. Um, so just note, if you want to set up uh, wrapping, you have to turn on wrap like this, like so, and that's when we'll run into this uh, gap challenge. Now, the fix most people will put in place is they'll click on a child container and they'll set the width to less than what they actually desire. <clears throat> so like I could pick 25%, and then I go to the advanced tab and I click on grow. Or I, for now, I'll just I'll just leave it. So I'm going to copy this one that I just did, and I'm going to paste those styles to the next two paste style. So now you'll see these are actually all not 33 anymore. They're what did I say? 25%. But they don't they don't fill up the whole space that I would want. So what can I do? Well, I can click on the first one and hit grow, and then you'll see it grows, but now it looks bigger than 33%. So it's taking up the available extra space. But I want it to be balanced. So I'm going to copy that one style again. And then I'm going to paste it to the other two. Ah, now that happens to work great. But here's a gotcha that I've noticed in a lot of other YouTube videos. Grow and shrink work okay oftentimes when there's a symmetry. Like three 33% wide, uh, wide columns or two 50% wide columns. But what if you have a 25% wide column, a 50% wide column, and a 25% wide column. When you start setting grow and shrink on multiple columns beyond two, and especially if there's an imbalance in the symmetry, then your results are going to vary and the alignments get hard, which I'm displaying down here and we'll quickly uh, get into. Maybe a few final thoughts to observe here. But uh, this, can, this can work, though, when you have a symmetry, right? So I have uh, my width of 25. I'm setting it to stretch to 33%. If I duplicate this, you'll see it does wrap. So that, that in my opinion, 
is not an adequate solution. There's still too much difficulty with alignments on the grow and shrink, um, but for certain designs that may help you out, it certainly should help your understanding. Now let's talk about the next case, which is vertical alignment issues. So if you look closely, I put a gradient background on the parent and just to create this sort of faux center line. And you'll notice if you look carefully that I have four 25% wide columns, which to get them on one line, what did I do? I set them to 20% and I set them to grow. Okay, so the parent is set to wrap. So then here's what I'm talking about. I, I'm trying to align these next ones to the ones above, right? Like theoretically, I would want, like I wanted this one to be 50. I would want this 50% wide column to line up precisely with the edge of this 25. And I'd want this 25 to line up precisely with the edge of this one. But you can see it's not quite right. So what I can do is click on that last container and you can see I set it to 45%. I, and I have set it to grow. So if I play around with these numbers, I can oftentimes get it to look like, yeah, maybe that is aligned. You know, and you'll notice that the, your mileage may vary there. But then there's also, under the grow and shrink, there's these custom settings where you can actually set numbers for grow and shrink. So I initially I was coming in here and trying to make tailored adjustments like this. But long story short, there are certain layouts where alignment will be impossible. It's just it's just a fact with Flexbox. Now on this one, this happens to look okay. Uh, if I shrink the size of my browser, it looks decent. Um, but uh, trust me, for a variety of layouts, uh, that vertical alignment um, will never happen. So the, the trick with Flexbox is uh, for wrapping and vertical alignment, uh, there are limitations. So so I wanted to get these basic sort of concepts in just so people are aware um, there are, are challenges around this. And in forthcoming videos, I'm going to propose um, some solutions for making sure that actually everything is always precise, everything wraps as expected, works with a 12-column grid. Uh, we'll get into that, <clears throat> but um, I think this is a good intro um, to some understanding around uh, Flexbox inside of Elementor and actually just anywhere. This is just how Flexbox is. And you can play around with it yourself. Um, try creating three, four column layouts, getting them to wrap using strange widths like, uh, you know, 66% or 33%. Try to do like 33%, uh, 66, and then something too smaller. Like you'll find out that it becomes impossible to do uh, really good alignment. Um, so anyway, uh, stay tuned for more. Please subscribe if this was helpful and have a good day.